I wonder how you feel, Dave, about the just the general sense that national sovereignty is being surpassed, that power is migrating upwards, that censorship appears to be such an important component of it. And I wonder you've said just then that from a spiritual and indeed biblical perspective, you feel optimistic. How do you imagine these movements might coalesce? How are they to coalesce when there is so much cultural division that even when in recent in recent months, uh, in particular since the Middle Eastern conflict flared up again, there's been division in spaces where there was starting to be yeah. consensus. How how are we going to truly manage to have consensus among people that don't agree on everything? How can we achieve that when there seem to be so many minds going off throughout the culture? It, it, I mean, it's basically like the unanswerable question to some extent, because this is you're basically like, what's the meaning of life in some way? Because it's getting groups of people, individuals first, and then groups of people to be like, oh, there's something good here that we can maybe share and build together and do something beyond all of us. Mm. It's the ultimate question, right? So putting aside that it's a, a big, que an impossible question, I can give you like some granular stuff, I suppose. Um, I mean, first off, I think one good thing that we're seeing right now, we're seeing this largely in Europe, is that Europeans, because of the craziness of the way immigration was done over the last decade or so, and just letting all of these people in, and not understanding that you're going to have to give these people certain things, and that the people who are job earners and everything might feel that their taxes are suddenly not being used for them, but for other people. it's There's all sorts of strife in Europe. I mean, you definitely have it in, in the UK, but it's obviously, it's in Belgium, it's in Italy now, it's in Spain, it's everywhere. I think that the reason I describe that as something good is that people are realizing that Spain exists for a reason. Spaniards are realizing that. The UK exists for a reason. Uh, Ireland exists for a reason. All of these countries exist for a reason. There's a reason for the nation state. The United States exists for a reason. We are not Canada. We share a border with Canada and we share a lot of values with Canada, but we're not. If you're an American, you have laws that are applicable to you and you hopefully have a commonality enough with those laws that you're not here to burn it down. I think what we now have are an awful lot of people in an awful lot of countries that don't seem to like the countries they're in. But the counter to that is that people are realizing, oh, if you live in the West, if you live in any of the countries that I just named, most of Western Europe and, and America and Canada, even Mexico, I'd say this, like you live in a pretty great place that is counter to the way humans have lived for a long, long time. And I think that the more people realize that, like here, for an American perspective, we've been watching about seven or 10 million uh, illegals come in in three years. Now, it doesn't matter, put aside skin color, put aside religion or anything else, any system, you can't just have an unlimited flood of people come into it, an unlimited flood. You just have no idea if 1% of these people are bad or what it's gonna do to the system, right? But we had it happening, finally, because of online shows, people started waking up to it and now it's a national topic. And suddenly people are talking about it again and saying, oh, we should have sovereign borders. So I, that's a long meandering way of saying that all of the stuff that sounds insane that we're dealing with all the time, that boys can magically turn to girls or that schools should be allowed to call children by different names without telling the parents, all of this stuff that no one in their right mind thinks is right or that we should judge people by the color of their skin because that's the, the way the entire DEI system works. Enough people, I think, now are getting to the point where they're, they're ready to do something about it. Will they do something about it? I don't know. Will it be national? Will it be worldwide? I don't know. And the challenges, by the way, will be very different in every country. One of the beautiful things about America is that we have integrated everybody way better, even, even than the UK. We have integrated everybody from every part of the world to put aside their ancient hatreds and, and be part of the melting pot here. It's fraying a little bit right now. It really is. You can feel it. Mm. But but I do believe that if, if we could just sell freedom properly... It, which we used to do. America in the 80s sold freedom. Doesn't mean we did everything perfectly, but Reagan knew how to sell the idea of freedom. That's the thing that unites all of us. So it's a long way of saying there's a lot of bad stuff happening, but the bad stuff leads to the wake up and maybe we're on our way. One of the things I think is interesting here is that when people present arguments around immigration, the assumption always was for me that coming from a country like Britain with an imperial and colonial past, that as well as the many wonderful things Britain has done, 
you know. Don't forget the wonderful things, There's, yeah. Yeah, the tea. Oh, no, that was India. Uh, the Beatles. <laughs> no, we made that. Well, the rock and roll came from you a lot. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, like, uh, like, you know. Come on, come on. Don't go too far down that road because that road will not lead you anywhere. You know but, what I mean? What I feel like is that the, the assumption was is that the reason for immigration, people are honest about certain economic requirements and a requirement for people to be tasked with certain social roles. But there was always this sense, particularly in modern arguments around immigration, that it's undergirded by compassion, that we have a duty and an obligation. But now knowing what I've come to understand in the post-pandemic era, like where, for example, the reason for the lockdowns and the medications and the social controls was similarly supposed to be compassion exactly. and the sanctity of life. And I don't buy those arguments from the establishment anymore. So now I don't believe that those arguments are being deployed anywhere. I always feel that there is a secondary motivation that is being concealed. So if people are saying that, you know, the reason for immigration is either economic, we need the labor or, you know, a duty that America or Western countries have because of their colonial or imperial past. If that is not the reason, do you ever entertain some of the, you know, for example, displacement theory that is about sort of providing alternative labor? Or I've even heard ideas that seem pretty extraordinary that fight in age males are being imported in large numbers and that there could be some almost insurrectionist event. And also, if you, if you start there, these are the kind of things that will get you dubbed all right. These are the kind of things that will get you a strike. These are the kind of things that are that where you feel adjacent to racism. Although, of course, you wouldn't necessarily be, there would be a right, racial dynamic necessarily to those categories. Sure. So how do you assess that? And what do you, you know, if immigration isn't because of economic reasons or, you know, or if the economic reasons have flood the labor market? Well, I think very simply, if, if anyone in their right mind thinks what's going on on our border right now, where we just have floods of people, floods of people coming through. If you think that has something to do with the compassion, the compassion of the Democrats to make our workforce healthier, that's it's just like a psychotic notion. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to me that you said that the, the COVID portion of compassion sort of allowed you to see the fakery around how they use compassion on, on other issues too. L look, when it comes to the gender stuff, young girls tell them that they're boys under the guise of compassion. That doesn't seem very compassionate to be, what would be compassionate is if you had a 12-year-old who was, you know, confused or had issues around their gender identity, what would be compassionate would be to give them the proper psychological help or figure out what's going on at home and everything else. And then I think you probably are where I am at on this as an adult, if they wished to do something with their body and be called a certain way, they could. And by the way, if they then as an adult treated me with respect, I would treat them with respect and, and all of the rest of it. I would like to send a message of love to our sponsors at Charlie's. Charlie's make this incredible product. Now, have you noticed that I'm looking incredibly young? It's not just the tiny hat, it's my skin. And my skin is looking good because of this range of extraordinary products. Now, I don't know if these products are gonna be for you, but they might be for someone you love and they make a perfect gift. And there's 20% off this pack for the next, I think we can do it for 48 hours. Is it 48 hours? Can we do it for 48 hours? If you use the code brand. Now there's a number of significant details about these extraordinary products. First, they're absolutely toxin free. Unlike a lot of cosmetics, you know, like you use things to make you look younger. It sinks poison venom into your face like some sort of oily little cobra, like some sort of Justin Trudeau moisturizer. Looks good, actually toxic. One of the components of this product that makes it extraordinary is Citrus Paradisi Peel Oil. This is a beautiful organic ingredient and the very kind of thing that you'd expect from Charlene, the founder of this company, who is on Joe Biden's hate list because of the stance she took during COVID. Remember, you can use our code to get a discount on these products. These products can do um, all manner of things, Elevate your skincare routine using the unmatched power of nature. Toxin free, baby. So say yes to natural goodness and show your skin its true potential. I will say they tend to look better if you use them in conjunction with a tiny, tiny little mouse's hat. So take a stand, demand transparency, let beauty shine from the inside out. Visit charlize.beauty forward slash brand and use the code brand for 20% off. Discover a new era of personal care, one that's truly toxic free. Stay radiant, stay conscious, stay beautiful. There will be someone in your life that will love you for this glorious little concoction. I'm calling it a basket of wonder. There's a shower gel in there. There's a restoring anti-aging serum. There's all sorts of stuff in there. I'm recommending it. I'm endorsing it to you. And Charlene, the founder of the company, she's a good, strong, damn fine American woman. 
But as it pertains to um, to immigration, I don't see how anyone could think that this is anything other than intentional, what's going on here. Because again, I said uh, a few minutes ago that for all of you in Europe that could go back 10 years, I think most people in the UK, I mean, Brexit proved this already, but I think it's even more significant now. Most people in the UK would say, we can't let in a million people. It doesn't matter if we've done some things wrong and the British Empire existed and everything else. Most people in Germany, Germany for sure. I mean, Angela Merkel even admitted it a couple years ago. She let in about a million and a half people and then it destroyed their social services. They have a new strife on the streets, a racial tension, which Germany obviously has a history of that, which didn't go well. When I hear Joe Biden or any of these people talk about immigration, it either feels very intentional. I mean, Elon Musk has talked about this a bit that, you know, in essence, they're trying to bring in new voters. And then, of course, the other piece, because they're realizing they're losing control of the minorities now. Black people tend right now, at, at least as it stands right now, are breaking a little more Republican. Hispanics are against illegal immigration because many Hispanics came here legally. And then they they don't want just anyone to be allowed in. They understand that. I mean, we're here in Miami, a lot of Cubans, a lot of Venezuelans, a lot of people from Latin America here, uh, many of whom I'm friends with, and they're the most Republican you can possibly imagine. They may not look like it on paper, right? Because the Republican is supposed to be the white, you know, rich guy, blah, blah, blah. But you come down here and you want to meet the people that love freedom more than you've ever seen in your life. Your head's going to explode. Like, those are the people you want to meet. As for the, for the other part that you said that they're bringing in a lot of um, fighting age, I mean, look, you only have to open your eyes. I, I don't think that's a crazy conspiracy theory. You watch these videos of people coming through. Why is it in crazy percentages, seemingly 25-year-old to 40-year-old men? Where are the women? Where, where is my great-grandparents who came through Ellis Island from Eastern Europe with one bag and nothing else? And it was a, you know, a woman and, and, a, and a man you know, and, and a child. Like it, it, We rarely see any of that. So you only have to look at it, really, to think something bizarre is going on. Um, there's a lot of reasons to think that China and Russia are just trying to flood our borders and we'll have all sorts of domestic strife and then we won't have our eye on the ball when it comes to, say, China invading Taiwan or whatever Russia is doing in Ukraine. Like there's there's just sort of a million things happening at once. But I, I think to me, the immigration, the immigration thing, well, I'll, give, I'll put it this way. Uh, Andrew Breitbart used to say that politics is downstream from culture. I would say everything is downstream from immigration, because if you don't just have a policy, have a policy, we can debate what the policy is, Right. I don't know, we can let in 100,000 people a year. Here are the vetting processes. We want to be able to reunite families. You can come if you have some a job promised to you or something else. But it's not compassion to let in 2 million people who have no connection here, don't speak the language, and then just put them on the dole, which the Democrats have largely done. And then literally in New York City, you have the Roosevelt Hotel, which was one of the most iconic hotels of New York, is now a, a sanctuary. Uh, it's, an, it's an illegal immigrant center, basically. It's a migrant center right now. Uh, they literally have housekeeping. Can you believe that? They have, they have housekeeping. So they have legal immigrants who now are doing housekeeping for illegals that are there. Is that compassionate to those people? Is that compassionate to the average person who lives in New York City who's now paying for it? So the compassion argument, the left has really done that really well. I think it's why most people, when they're young, are lefties. It, it makes you feel good to, to think you can help everybody and that you come from a place that did bad things. There's this unearned guilt. And you, you take all of those things together and you end up with something very dangerous, which again, I'm glad people are, are kind of waking up to right now. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to see more uncensored content where free speech can flourish, join our live stream. Click the link right here to watch the next video if you want to, or become a member of a growing movement. Download the Rumble app and you'll be informed every time we make a new piece of content. Stay free.